All right, so a um, few things. Well, thank you for coming this morning. I know it's early and you guys found parking. It's nice. Uh, we are going to pass around a sign-in sheet. If you could just please just uh, check your name off. Just give me on this little pink clip one here. Let's start right here. Okay. Um, other things. I know some of you, I, I think most of you did your homework, right? But if you just happen to forget it, the dog ate it. We have some here for you, okay? If you need them, um, you can just pass them down. Just raise your hands and we'll get them to you. So today is the very first <laughs> workshop. Working workshop, that is. So it should be quite fun. Does everyone have a laptop? Does anyone need a laptop? Yes, okay. We have extras here, so. That's why we got these um, Other things, please, please don't forget, next Saturday is our last guest speaker workshop with Ms. Corey Oyson. She's going to be talking about how to piece together all your stories to make it a nice book at the end. Um, so if you guys can make that, it's from the same time from 1 to 3. Here at the center next Saturday. Sorry. Uh, do you have to RSVP with us? So these, many of you probably already signed it at the beginning, at the very first uh, kickoff. But if you would like to attend now, you can just shoot us an email um, and we'll sign you up. Okay. Other things. Um, don't, okay, so lab hours. After this workshop, from 12.30 to 2 are our open lab hours. So you can come in. We have a computer lab over there. And if you want to use the Ancestry.com stuff, um, you know, go for it, okay? And you can also use your laptops in here because we have this whole room all day, so. And we can show you how to log online. We're going to teach you how to do that today. Uh, let's see. Other things, the Koseki, does anybody need this form? This Koseki? Yes. I want to ask you about the lab. Is that just for today? On the day we have the workshop? It's every, it's... Every one of the Saturday workshops days uh -huh. from 12.32, that's when the lab hours Just on Saturday? Yeah. So in between the workshops? In between. Yeah. OK. Um, so does anybody need this Koseki form? Yes. I know we emailed it out, but maybe some people didn't have a chance to get it. <coughs> So the, just to clarify with this cold psyche, right? Everybody should try to do this because it's all included in your $150 fee that you paid to sign up for this program. Um, you know, if you don't know the exact address of your, let's say, great grandfather, or grandfather, just try your best to like specify which area or you know the city or village, prefecture. Anything is better than nothing. Okay, you might as well give it a try. That's way. Um, are there any questions before we start? If not, I will hand it off to Ms. John Kotake and Ms. Kerry. All right. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Donna Kotake. Um, I'm on the board here of the JCCC and C, and I'm glad you're all here. This is Kerry Coe, who is a uh, my coworker, my friend, who I forced into helping me um, with this today as well. Um, let's see. I thought the first thing we would do is kind of go around quickly, and if you could do in less than a minute, introduce yourself and tell us why you were doing this. Much less than a minute. Oh, 30 <laughs> seconds. Okay. Okay. So, want to start down there? Okay. <laughs> my name is Kayoko Kitsuda. And I'm here to, oh, I have four grandkids, all born here. So I just thought it would be nice to have a uh, little something for with their grandparent, you know, grandfather, how they, how they came here, and how they spent time, you know, years here. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why they're here. So. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Kogi Ozawa, for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Marie Kurihara. I'm writing the family history for three generations. 
I'm George Yamamoto, and I want to look into my dad's paternal side. Um, he was a fixture in J Town for a long time, and Harvard and Mazeki, so he was right home. But I just don't know very much about his lineage right there. I'm going to track it. Right. I'm uh, Leslie Yi Murata, and I'm working on my mother in law, uh, Louise Murata's uh, stories for my daughter. I'm Cynthia, and I'm working on my, I think, my ma my maternal side um, for my, my kids. I'm Christine Umeda, and I'm from Sacramento. And I've been interested in my family history because we know very little about my parent, my mother's side of the family. So I'm doing my mother's side of the family, and I have something on my father. And my husband. <laughs> Stanley Meadow from Sacramento. Uh, I'm trying to track down both sides uh, by Kos Koseki and uh, for the history. Uh, like many of you don't know too much about our grandparents and before, and so this is a great opportunity. Thank you. I'm Chris Hiroshima, and since both our grandchildren are biracial, I wanted to sort of start um, giving them some history, and I'll start with my father in law. I'm Pat Basami. I'm here with my husband, Chris, to look into his family history. And I'm here also because he's somewhat computer illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Chris, and um, I lost my dad a while ago, and I'm losing more and more of my aunts and uncles. And it just kind of hits home that you have to find out what's going on with the, with the history. My name is Alan Mizahara, and my uh, grandfather came to this country in 1890. We were almost uh, very little about him, and so I'd like to trace this uh, back from Japan. I'm Betty Ozawa. I'm just here to help my sister Marie and my husband Koji and getting them to this together. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Don, so I'm going to trace down my parents. I guess what I like to do is you know, pass on to my kids so they can make each other more. She's doing all the work, I just kind of Okay. I'm Michi Kashiro, and my father's side of the family is a big mystery, so I'm here to see if I can verify his entry into the United States. I'm Jan Durr, and my daughter participated in the Roots program um, with the Chinese Cultural Center and last year discovered her Chinese roots, but she doesn't know anything about her Japanese roots because I don't know anything, so mm -hmm. well, that's what I'm here to do. Okay. I'm Donna Kimura, I'm here to um, check out my grandfather. <laughs> well, well, that's information about my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> <Shall we? laughs> I'm Diane Kukami. My cousin, who's Sansei, got married to a Japanese guy some years ago and got a hold of my mother's side of Koseki. And I thought this would be a really nice opportunity to find out more about my father's side. I'm Sitz Kofi Yoka. When my mother passed away at the, the memorial service, my children didn't know how the relatives were connected and stuff. So I started to do a diagram, which didn't quite work out. So I got involved more into that than the two things. Hi, I'm Michelle Saki. I'm here to collect information before it's all gone to the family. Because mm -hmm. once my grandparents are gone, you know, I'm not going to know anything after that. I'm Bob Nakamura. Um, I actually had some information when I was a kid about my grandmother, but um, it got lost while my mother passed away. So I'm trying to retrace some of that information and see what else I can do. Thank you all for um, sharing your stories. Yeah, everyone has a lot of similar uh, things. Okay, um, just a, all of you have handouts. Um, what we have given you will be shown up here, obviously. So today is basically um, what we're going to be doing today. You can see here, we'll talk a little bit about the overview. Um, Carrie's going to do a demo. Blurb is the um, software program that we're going to be using um, to create your book. And then uh, we'll also talk a little bit about book templates. And it sounds like most of you have some themes already going. So 
think that will be a, a short discussion. And then for the working session, um, what we'll do is have all of you, if you haven't already, download the, the Blurb software. If you have already, then maybe you could just, you know, start playing around with it, and we'll be all here to help you do that. Um, then we'll do a brief wrap up, and then we have homework assignments for each session. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about homework too. Um, so you know the. This uh, project, the Nisei Family Legacy uh, Project, is funded by the California Civil Liberties Public Education Project, and as most of you know, that came out of the Commission on Wartime Relocation and Internment of Civilians, of which the main um, impetus of that is to provide education about the World War II experience um, to, so that it will never happen again. Um, the center has been, over the number of years, has been doing a number of different projects uh, centered around education, around the internment. And last year, I think we did one called Real Nikkei, in which we did oral histories, taped oral history projects. And this is kind of a follow-up. So this, this time, we're all going to be producing books. Uh, so what we have for this, this series is we're going to do five workshops. And I think uh, most of, have you all received the handout of what all the different workshops are? Okay. So we're going to be doing five workshops, and with that, you, with your $150, you get the five workshops, you get the koseki that Ryan talked about earlier, and you're going to be able to produce a, a one book. And if you want to buy more, you can do that, but um, with your fee, you'll be getting one book for free. Um, and then in June, we're going to be doing an exhibition of all of our books that we've oh. done. So um, that'll be exciting because we have actually three classes, so there'll be about 60 people or 60 books at that exhibition. So that'll be great. Um, and then uh, these are the different workshops. Uh, you know, today's getting started, and then the next workshop will be about how to prepare all your information that you're going to be putting in your books. And then we're going to have two sessions of which you're mainly going to be doing work. We'll have some brief demos, but it'll be mainly working on your book, and we can help you do that. And then the end one is called the finishing touches, which will show you, you know, how to kind of do spell check and all those fun kind of things. Um, and then this is basically what the format's going to be for each one of our workshops. That we'll have some kind of demo, and then you'll mainly work on on your book during the session. And then um, we'll come back together again and to see if there are any common questions or things that people want to share about what they learned, you know, through the through the project, and then we'll talk a little bit about what you're going to be doing for the in preparation for the next workshop coming up. Okay, so now okay. I'll turn it over to Carrie. So no, I I'm thinking at this point. Let me get out of this presentation. Um, then I'm going to need to sign in again. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Hopefully. Let's go. Cool. Alright, so if everyone on your laptops, if you could start signing in. JCC and C and AT&T together, we providing free Wi-Fi for Japan Town. So we will get you all hooked up online right now. If you could just go down to your um, Wi-Fi spot on the bottom. I think connect. JCC. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, it should say JCCNC free, and then just double click that. Oh, you're already Okay, that's cool. Um, if you look, if you have a Mac, it's on the top right. Yeah. What did you say the Oh, I'm gonna give you. Once you um. <laughs> All right, so if you should see the little Wi Fi thing, if you have a uh, regular PC on the bottom, but if you have a Mac, it's on the top right. Hit that JCC CNC free. And then after you do that, click on to whatever browser you guys use. If it's Internet Explorer, or if you use Mozilla, or Safari, go ahead and double click that. And it should pop up. 
Now you're gonna see. You should see our login page. Is everyone there? <laughs> is everyone there? You got our login page. Awesome. Okay. Wait. Is everyone there? No. Wait. 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 Okay. You have to go to. It's JCC and yeah. three or four. You see three. a four. It's free. Three. Three. JCC C N C three. I we see a four. Hey, Ryan. Can you help them up? You don't get it. How are you? JCCCNC webpage come up. It'll say your uh, free Wi-Fi. What you're gonna do is um, scroll down, and then if you hit on the right side, there's a scroll bar. Hit that. So you scroll down, and then you should see an SNC login page. And within that little window, the SNC, you have to scroll in that. So we're working on this login. Yeah. Now what you're going to do is, under username and password, for username, it's, you just type in account. And for password, you type in JCCCNC. And then you hit login, and it should come up. Okay. Oh, there's okay. Okay, so, go. 
So what I wanted, what, are, what I just wanted to give you a real quick overview on was what oh, verb okay. is. Verb is a, it, it's a kind of a self-publishing tool. It's it's a website. It's a very cool website um, where you can actually download uh, software that's proprietary software to verb.com, and you would build your book in the software. Um, it's a combination of pictures and text and all kinds of neat things to do with pages. And then what you, you can actually do on Blurb is you would upload it back to Blurb.com. They will actually send it off to a printer and have it printed and bound for you. Um, when you upload it, you can actually make it available for other people to see it. So you can have your friends, your family actually looking at a, you know, kind of a, a smaller copy of your book on the um, internet. Oh, let me hold, let me finish. Yes. And they can actually um, order copies of the book uh, from Blurb.com as well. So it's a way you can actually kind of distribute your book to family and, families and friends if you want. Um, what we're looking at right now is the software for Blurb. Uh, Booksmart, which is their proprietary software. And what we would basically be doing is starting a new book. Okay. So, and I'm just going to run through this very quickly to give you an idea of what, what, what it is. So you start with, you know, finding a book. You get to choose different size, a different size book. Um, in our Workshop. What we're going to be doing is using standard, either standard landscape book, and the size is um, 10 by 8, or standard portrait book, which is 8 by 10. So you can choose one of these two. Okay. Um, and again, we'll we'll show you how to do this later on. So let's say I'm going to use the standard landscape book. I can continue, choose my starting point. I'm going to use a combination of text and photos. You can do just a photo book alone, a wedding book. You know, they're, they're, these are just kind of the starting templates. You can always alter what you're doing later on, but I just, I'm going to start with a text and photo um, book. And blurb.com has these ways of actually teaching you and guiding you through how to create a book on, on, on their software. Um, it's, it's really very good. You can actually um, get your documents from your file, from your computer, your photos from your computer. It, it downloads them back into the software so that it makes it very easy for you to actually insert them into the book. Um, at this point, what I am going to do is I'm going to go back and open a book that I've already kind of started putting together. Um, and so this is kind of a book that I try, I just used as a workshop copy. And what it starts with is a cover. You know, you can set up a cover and you can have photographs and text and all that stuff in there. Um, and right now, what we're going to be doing in this workshop is what's called an image wrap cover. So it's a hardcover book with the actual image of the cover printed right on this hardcover book. Um, I don't know whether you have copies of that. That's what this is. Oh, nice. So, so that's an image wrap book. Um, she, Donna has the standard, for, the standard landscape format. And um, here's the other one. Oh, and that's a And standard. this is a, a paper cover. That's a paper cover. And, and there are options for paper cover, but for this right. workshop, we're just going to use the image image wrap because we, I mean, I like it the best. I think it's really the best mm -hmm. cover type. Um, just scrolling through the pages, you can see what it does. It, 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 it'll set up some pages for you. Um, what I did want to show you, though, is once you get to this point, and it's really hard to see. I know that I apologize. What I, what I did in these working copies is I actually grayed out the text. So when when you are working on your book, your text will be black, it'll be dark, it'll be easy to see. I actually intentionally grayed out the text here because um, as you'll see later on, we are actually using this for 
provide paper templates to you so you have an idea of what, what things will, will actually look like. But what I wanted to show you was the fact that you have a lot of different layouts available to you, text and photos. So for instance, if I'm looking at this page and I wanted to add photos to it, you know, I could, I could actually just click on a, a photo and it would change the photo format. So you can use a different layout per page? You can use yes. a different layout per page. You can use a combination of um, layouts. But what we have done is I have actually printed out some standard layouts for you. There are about 10 layouts per, um, per horizontal or vertical format, just to kind of begin with. They're, they're the layouts that I find most helpful to co combine text and photos. Um, but basically what you could do is at this point, say I wanted to add a photo, I would just drag and drop a photo in there. And you know, this is text. If I actually, I will actually make it dark for you. So now what, now what you're seeing is, you know, the, the, you got the photo in there, you've got the text in there. Basically, if you got your text in a Word document, you can cut and paste it into the, this um, format here. Or you can actually write your text on the format itself as well. Um, how would you do our documents? You know, if you have a document, do you have to make it into a photo? Yeah, so what we so what we would help you do is to scan the document so that it's in kind of like a photo image and then you you, you paste it in there. Do you recommend uh, scanning everything that you have? And put this in the middle? Do you have um so do you have any photos that are already digit in digital format or yeah, external yeah. format? Yeah. So that you, you that's fine. Um, but anything that's in a paper format and you want it to actually appear as an image, then you want to scan it. You want to scan it and use it as paper. And we'll be doing scanning in the next workshop if, if oh, you okay. don't have. I was not sure what the question was. Yeah. So we will actually for you know for those of you who need assistance with scanning documents, we'll actually be. Um, helping you with scanning, scanning yeah. stuff. Because yeah. I think you're going to have just a scanner available. Yeah. So we'll 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 um, just to show you some of the other formats, you know, you've got formats where you've got two pictures on a page and some text. Uh, that's a, a different format there. You've got a format where you can actually take a big picture and spread it across two pages. Um, full kind of full page, big pictures. You can have four pictures to a page, and then if you'll see, you know, you can caption each picture separately. So it really works well. Um, you can have this one has nine pictures to a page. So again, you've got all of these different choices here. We're going to give you some of these standard formats. To, to start with, but you know, as for those of you who want to branch out and, and explore other formats, you're, you're, you know, I think you're welcome to do that. Um, the other thing that Word does actually allow you to do is to take a page and actually edit the format itself to make it your own personal format. That takes a little more time and effort to do, um, and there. This, this works software is not absolutely perfect when you do that. There are some glitches that, that can occur, um, as, as Donna not sure yet, yes. Um, but you know, it, is, it is an option there as well. Karen, are you limited to the number of pages you can have, like it's only 26 pages, 25 pages? Or can you have your book be as long as you can afford it to be? So, so that's an, so there there are some I think some limitations in terms of this project this project and because the longer your book is the more it costs right yeah. um, I can show you a little bit more about kind of what the pricing is or prices are actually on their website but I think we're saying if we're limiting to to twenty pages, 20 pages. Mm -hmm. wow yeah and so that's twenty pages which means front to back yeah back. sheets of paper. So that's one, well, one sheet of paper is two pages, basically. Yeah. Right? No, so it's like. So it's 
So it's only 10 pages? Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. That, that's what we're... But that's the general thing. I mean, I think if we want everyone to finish a book, so if you are able to do the 20 pages and you still have more text and you're mm -hmm. able to finish it within the allotted time, uh -huh. um, you know, I think we could work different things out. But the main thing is we want everyone to be able to finish a book. So we didn't want to say, oh, you could do 50 pages and people are yeah. still at, you know, 10 pages or something. Yeah. So. The thing with Word is if you, just for your own knowledge, went outside of the context of this workshop, if you were to do your own travel book or anything like that, where will accommodate hundreds of pages per book? Um, so you can actually make quite a, quite a large book. If you want. You know, one, just one brief thing about the photos. When you're picking your templates, if you don't use the regular templates we use, even though the photos here look pretty big, when they come out in the book, if you pick one of these with a lot of photos, with more than like three, Kind of right, yes. and they're pretty small. Yeah, and that and that's kind of yeah. why we printed the paper paper copies right. for you, so that you can kind of see what the size of the page right. is going to look like and how, how small the photos are going to be. Right. Um, oops. The other thing that Word does allow you to do, and you know, for some of you, you may wonder, well, my photo doesn't really fit the space that is on this page, um, and just very quickly. And I can take this photo and basically make it smaller, make it larger. I can fit the entire thing in so that it fits, you know, the photo fits in the bottom. And I, this is a very good thing to know because basically, although right now it looks like there's a lot of blank space up here, if I preview the book and that page, the photo, it's only the photo that shows. Everything else is just plain paper. So Word is really good in terms of kind of helping you to format your, your book. Um, as, as we go through this, again, you'll see me using this preview book thing quite a bit. Basically what this does is it shows you what you've laid out as if it were going to be printed in that format without all of the other stuff showing. Okay, um, let's see, what else was on the agenda? Is that res do you want to talk about the resolution thing? Oh, you mean for a photo? Yeah, right there. Like this? Yeah. So, if, you know, if, you've, got, if you've got a digital photo that you've made at a family gathering recently, chances are it's pretty good resolution if you're using a, a, you know, a fairly high resolution or a a pretty good digital camera to, to take it. And so you probably won't have this problem with your the resolution of the, your digital photo being too low for it to print properly. Um, but what would happen is if you are using an old photo that was scanned and it was scanned in a very low resolution so that it, you know even when you print it it's not it's kind of grainy. Um, you might get this warning that says that you're some kind of a warning that says that your image is, it's an image resolution warning, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, where it offers to resize it to the proper size, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I think both Don and I have found out is that you will get, they're very conservative with this warning, you know, because I think they're dealing with professional photographers a lot and all that stuff. So they're really very conservative. For the most part, I've been in situations where I've ignored the warning and it's been absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you do see the warning and you want to consult with us, then, you know, please do. But um, for the most part, if you think your photo is a pretty good size and it prints pretty clearly, then, um, you know, it should be okay. Is yeah. And then I have several books here that I brought and you can look through it and I'll show you the ones that actually had a lot of my because I do the same thing. I ignore them all. <laughs> so, um, you want to talk about caption and text warnings? Or that's the only other thing I can Yeah, do. caption and text warnings. Yeah. So if I took, hmm, let's try this page. Sorry. I'm going to make this text black.
and say I wanted to take this text and really blow it up. And I want to get the order before I actually do this. Increase the font size. You could just push it over. Uh, it, yeah, oh, just do it in your it. caption. I think it'll be in the caption. Okay. You know, and for those of you who aren't all that familiar with computers, please don't worry. You know, <laughs> that's what we're here for, is to you know help you to do this, to make sure that you do have a, a book when you come out of this. So, you know, I know I may be doing things that either you're very familiar with or you're not too familiar with, um, but don't worry about it. So Donna suggested that we put a lot of text into one of these caption blocks, and basically what happens is then you get a warning saying that you got too much text in it, and so you've got to cut down the text. That will also that can also happen in um, these text blocks here as well you can actually have too much text. The other thing that's really interesting with Blur is most of the standard formats that have text or text and pictures, if you've got too much text in your text block, what it does is it opens a new page and runs the text into the new page automatically. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's, that's also a, a good thing to do. Um, one of the things that I will be handing out to you is a block of text just taken from the Nikkei workshop site um, in 10 point font and in 12 point font so that you can compare how it will fit into the, the page formats that I'm actually passing out as well. And so you can kind of gauge how much text you have and how, much, how, many, how large a text block that you need to, to fill. Um, okay. Do we want to pass out the um, templates and yeah. let people look at them? Yeah. No, so okay. yeah, I will. We'll go do that. After. Okay. So why don't we get these tips out? Oh, you know the, the other. I guess uh, the other question was whether people kind of knew whether they wanted to do horizontal. Oh, right, right. Um, so, so we have, um, Carrie did some templates, that paper templates that you can, to help you lay out your book, but we need to know, I know this is a quick decision here, which way you want to do it, so that we can give you the appropriate uh, templates. So this is the obviously <laughs> landscape. Uh, this is uh, uh, a big decision. Or, or big you know, decision. Or we can we can hold off and you can think about it because of the templates later. If you want. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, if you know now, or if you want to get your template later, either way. Mm -hmm. If you have more pictures than text, then it will be better. It doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll tell you, honestly, if, if I were doing a book and it had more pictures, I'd probably use the horizontal format. To me, the, the, the text, the page layouts for horizontal format are actually a little bit better. Yeah, let me, let me um, open up, uh, let me close that. The landscape. Oh, okay. Yeah, so for some reason, I kind of actually like the um, these layouts a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. So when if you saw a lot of photos. Yeah, and then this, this is all set up. So we're going to pass around samples of each of them so you can kind of take a look and see like what Donna did and see if which one um, you might want to do. Those will be coming around. Do you get a choice of uh, all the stars? Yes. I have a choice of my You do? <laughs> so the question was whether you have a choice of fonts and font style um, and sizes of fonts, and you do. Um, 
the one thing that you probably want to be careful about is you know, changing too much because basically what happens is when you start a book with kind of this master template, it actually kind of picks the fonts for you. So if you change the fonts, you may have to go back and change them in every page and in every page of text block. But yes, um, certainly, you know, I can take this and change the just change the font on that one. This is not and I can change the color. So yeah, so you, you, can, you can do a lot of things. You can, the fonts you can use the fonts that are available to you are every font that is available on your computer. So for those of you who have extra fonts, you'll have even more than than what I have here. You can certainly change all your fonts. Background. Yeah, you could change the background color too. Yeah, you can change the background color. So if I wanted to do a background color of green, to do that. Um, you can do borders on your pictures. So if I wanted to do a really thick border, I could do that. If I wanted to do something pretty silly, I could do that. Um, yeah. So there, there's a lot that you can do. What, oh, sorry. One of the things that we probably want to do first is just to make sure that everyone is at least first in kind of the basics. And so a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about are very, at a very basic level. But as you become um, more versed with uh, Booksmart, then you can kind of branch out on your own and try things. So, do we want to have people decided already? If you've already decided what template you want, then you could let us know, and then we'll hand out uh, things. Maybe Ryan and Courtney could help. Okay. Well, when, when would we have to know? Second mm -hmm. session, third session, yeah. workshop? Or I, you know, I think well, we're going to start working at the next mm -hmm. workshop yeah. on the actual um, on your actual book. So we should have decided so you, by right. Yeah. Once once you start working on the book, um, you can't change between horizontal and vertical. Um, Warp, you know, Warp has a new thing where it there are different horizontal format sizes, and it will kind of allow you to more easily change between horizontal format sizes. But we're using one size for horizontal and one size for vertical. Mm -hmm. And you can't change from vertical to horizontal very easily. Mm -hmm. But they're the same size, except one's one way and one's the other way. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, they're the same size, 8 by 10 and 10 by 8. Thank you. 
when they did the guidance, let me see what side down. No, that's it. Oh, he does. Oh, he does. Definitely. So, what I'm passing off are just two. Are just two. To show you kind of what long text looks like in different fonts, so that you can kind of gauge how much text fits this in this template from long text. This is horizontal. You got that basic idea. So this is mainly for people to help you.
Oh, that's all right. Work. You can have two <laughs> fonts. You can, yeah. have, you can play with yeah. You can play with you can play with the fonts. You can have two, two different fonts in the same text block. You can highlight text. You can color certain words with a different color. Um, but basically, what I want to you know, as you're building the book and you have this batch of text that you're going to somehow incorporate, you know, you're going to want an idea of am I going to need a full page of text or am I going to need half a page of text because you know, I don't have that much. So that, that's, that was kind of the concept between handing out those um, <coughs> pages to you. Yes. And this will be about the size of the final book that you have to So that's what I So where the, where the black no, no, outline the pages, is. pages, in terms of pages. Yeah. So where so the, where the black line is, that should be the this should this border here should be eight by ten. And that's that's the actual that's the actual size of the line. But the number of pages. Yeah, I got him. Yeah, well there's twenty twenty three pages. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Everything. 